We have a civilization that lives in submarines. I don't know how the submarines got there. They were created by um, physical processes which are a little different than the usual physical processes. Instead of creating particles, they create submarines. And the submarines are made of various materials. They could be concrete, they could be iron, uh, they have air in them and stuff like that. And on the average, most of them, their density is different than the density of water. So when they're created, and they tend to be created with some form of life, some sort of primitive life in them, some of them sink because they're too heavy, and some of them float to the top because they're too light. Now it turns out in this world, sinking or floating to the top is deadly. If they float to the top, they explode. If they sink to the bottom, they crash on rocks. Everybody inside them, all the uh, single-celled creatures, everything just gets destroyed. So there's not much chance that your submarine will survive and that you will survive. But there's a lot of submarines out there. The ocean is full of them, zillions and zillions and zillions of them, each one with its own life in it a very, very tiny fraction happens to have a density which is just barely right that they float, not falling, not sinking, not rising. That's a very fine tuning. Mm -hmm. In fact, they have to be able to last a billion years without crashing if you want life to progress in them and form some intelligent creatures. What's the chances that a submarine just created randomly will survive that long? Epsilon, that's a, that's a word for a tiny number. Very small, 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the minus 1,000 or whatever. That's not really correct, but, um, but let's say the chances. So in order to survive and form life, there needs to be a great deal of fine-tuning of the properties of the submarine. How much iron, how much concrete, how much air, and so forth, in order to make it just float just right. The people who live in that submarine, who happen to have survived, are very curious. They say, hey, that's an amazing property of submarines. We need to understand that. It must be that the rules of submarine creation must, for some peculiar reason, make them absolutely fine-tuned to have the density of water. And they try and they try and they try to, um, to find rules of what they call physics, uh, which would explain to them why submarines are always formed at this density, and they fail. They fail. There's nothing in their physics which would, or chemistry or anything else which would tell them why that's true. And then one of them gets an idea. He gets the idea, well, maybe with getting at this in the wrong direction, maybe what's true is there's just a lot of submarines out there, millions and billions and billions of them. And the laws of physics allow for the possibility of a whole variety of different values of the average density. And maybe it's just the case that we were lucky. No, not that we were lucky that there were so many of them that some tiny, tiny fraction managed to survive. Why are we the ones who survived? Because if we weren't, we wouldn't have survived to ask the question. So this character's idea was not to look for an explanation of why submarines have this particular density. The idea was to understand why so many submarines were created and why it is that uh, the laws of physics permit a vast variety, a landscape, a landscape of many, many different possibilities. If we have a theory in which the ocean is big enough and the number of submarines created by the submarine creating mechanism is sufficiently large and the number of possibilities for the average density is sufficiently, what's the right word? Um, many, many possibilities, then there will just be some, some terribly small fraction which will survive, 
and that will be the ones which have physicists in them which can ask the questions. Um, that's the basic logic. That's the basic logic. It's sometimes called the anthropic principle. It has other names also. I can't remember what they are. Um, philosophers like yourself like to try to divide them into categories, strong anthropic, weak anthropic, blah, blah, blah. I just told you what it means, and we don't need any fancy um, philosophical language to divide them up.